Welcome back. Today we're going to be working on the 1995 Silverado. The four-wheel drive hasn't worked in some time. Uh, last time I took this thing out on a mudding trip, it was working fine, but uh, when I went out to the woods to go pick up a truck and needed a four-wheel drive, well, it didn't engage, light didn't come on. So today we're going to discuss what the most common issues are with these four-wheel drive trucks. So stay tuned, we got a lot to do today. If you suspect you're having trouble with your four-wheel drive, the best thing to do is get it up in the air and engage it and see what's working and what's not working. In this case, we're going to do that. We're going to show you how easy it is. You do want to make sure you are on a safe surface. Um, we're, we're doing this on dirt, but during the summertime back here, this dirt's pretty much as hard as concrete. But be safe when you do this test. A uh, series test we're going to run. First off, we're going to do four-wheel drive high. We're going to look at the transfer case. We're going to make sure we have power going where it needs to. And then from there, we'll show you where the two most failed items are in a GMIFS. Now generally the way I've always done this truck, I've always put it in neutral and then bang on the transfer case. At which point the light used to come on. Now before you think that your light is bad, of course it could be bad, before you think your light is bad, also remember that the engagement on at least the 95 happens only when you put it in drive. As you can see here, the transfer case is indeed sending power, but if you look at the wheels, no power is getting to the wheel. It is kind of cool to watch though. I guess I'll watch for in for a sec. But no wheel spinning in the front. So at this point, we confirm that it's a front differential issue. Or if you look back here, right there is the transfer case switch that engages the front wheel drive actuator. Or the front four wheel drive actuator, excuse me. It's kind of a pain to get to, but most of the time those don't go bad. It's always the unit and the dip. Alright, we need this thing turned off to get this out and show you the other test we'll run. We're going to run the electrical test next. All right, from here, he's going to engage the four-wheel drive for me. I want to show you the rod that engages to actually turn power to the TLA, thermal linear actuator, or front four-wheel drive actuator, depending on what part store you call. All right, at that point, power gets sent to the switch. And we're going to go test the switch next, make sure it's receiving power before we say that the uh, front four-wheel drive actuator is bad. One thing nice that GM did for you is they put it down here on the passenger side. Now you notice there's two different connectors there. One is for the light engagement and the other is for the, well, TLA or front four-wheel drive actuator. He's going to go ahead and disconnect that now and that's our test point. Another thing with the testing on this, you cannot test chassis to ground the power. You actually have to test it at the connector because the connector finishes the ground back. Alright, go ahead and unplug it and we'll get our test going. Just simply unplugs. As you see, he's going to put his test probes in. I have another camera set up because this is a two-person job. You need to have a person down testing and you got to have a person up below hitting the engagement on the lever. This is not a push button. So I'm going to go do that now. i got a camera set up. You can see what the voltage is supposed to be at the transfer case selector switch is working correctly. All right, the other oddity with this 95 is it'll let me do the test with the key on, not running, but if this engine's running, it won't go into four-wheel drive mode until you're in drive. It's kind of odd. 
All right, at this point, I'm going to engage it. Voltage. All right, so at this point, we know that the selector switch is good. We're going to replace the front four-wheel drive actuator. That should be a gooey mess. Let's get under the truck now and replace it. Now that you've diagnosed your front actuator is dead, we're going to go ahead and remove it. This is going to be one of the few times I'm going to say it's okay to use a crescent wrench. This is the number one common problem with the IFS. In a second, I'll show you the other common problem. A little bit of grease may pop out, and that's okay. Probably a good time while you got in the air to service it, see if it needs fluid. I mean, you can't look at it until it's bad. It's not opening or it's not pushing the uh, fork forward. All right, let's get the new one. Now, before you put your new part in, verify it looks like your old one. I haven't seen too many differences with these, but I know about 10 years ago it was a serious issue, and it all depending on what uh, front, wheel front that you had, if you had the 8600, 7400 GBRW or half ton. But it looks like today Master Pro's come up with a solution that fits them all, so we're gonna be installing the Master Pro today. But, as you can see, they look the same. We're going to get this truck running again. We're going to make this truck great again. This is all hand work until you get to the end. And you can also see the size difference between the GM one and this aftermarket one. And it doesn't need to be super tight either, just... They do go bad. More than snug. And then wipe your grease off. And then roll your wire over. Grandma's house. The axle. Push it on this metal clip here. That holds this harness on. Kind of got to wiggle it on there and cuss and shut a little bit. And once it's all the way on there, and just pop your connector in and test your four wheel drive. Snug like a bug in the rug. Time to retest. All right, let's see if this is going to work. Put her in old neutral. Oh, don't be looking through the camera trying to do that, I guess. Alright, in a neutral. Now as I'm going to show you here, the light isn't going to pop on until I put it in drive. This one's always been a little goofy. I always put it in neutral and then drive. Sometimes the light comes on right away, sometimes it don't. But there we go. You can actually feel it in the steering wheel now too. See if it goes out. Okay. 
yeah after it warms up no problem but sometimes it can be a little late and that you know i think that has to do with the ecu the ecu controls the engagement because i've noticed in low this thing shifts funny too that's just like the world of electronics we live in that's the way it is